Welcome to the Powercast with Charlie Johnson. I'm one of the world's leading fitness and transformation coaches. I'm going to be providing you with the tools to build your ultimate body and mind. It's an absolute pleasure today to have a great friend and superstar photographer of the fitness world, uh, Ben Mark Photography, on the podcast today. So thank you very much. Hi, everyone. How are you doing, mate? Thank you very much. Yeah, very good, very good. So, um, the subject today we wanted to discuss, hence why Ben is on here, is to try and impart us with his wisdom in regards to photo shoot prep. Because I know you must get this a hell of a lot where people they're booking a shoot and you probably get inundated with questions in terms of, oh, what do I need to do? Like from women, like, what do I need to do with my hair on the day? Uh, like from skincare to nails and all sorts of random bits and pieces. Yeah. You don't really think about it until you book in the photo shoot. Um, the general thing that I try and keep people in mind is that the fact that you that, that people are concentrating more on the fact of like you said what clothing they're going to be wearing what nails what hair and all that type of stuff when the main thing you've been working hard for for the last 8 12 16 however many weeks is your body so how you do your hair realistically how many how many photos have you looked back like 10 years ago and what was i doing with my hair <laughs> that's, that's a very good point so, like, you can do all of this type of thing and really faff over it, but realistically, if you just spent the whole time concentrating on just looking your best diet wise and you know doing the, the diet right, getting the training right, you're gonna you're gonna look good regardless. And it doesn't matter if your nails were blue and your hair was black and your you know whatever. Um, I think people just get too concerned about what other people will think of their photos. So yeah. that's what yeah. would concern themselves. Whereas realistically, if you said to people, turn up with what you wanted, they'd probably just turn up in whatever sports bra on top and just go, oh, yeah, cool. Most guys don't really care. They just put on a pair of shorts and some of them don't even turn up with shoes like some uh, one of our clients. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, he knows who he is. We'll keep him unnamed, Paul. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like... It, it's one of those things where you, I personally think you can get really like beat up about those things. Now, yeah, if you're trying to go for a very professional high end look and you want people to, let's say you're doing it as a personal trainer, yeah. then yeah, like if you've got new trainers on, you know, you had your hair done, feeling good, you'll feel good, which means in the photos you'll probably look better. And the thing I always say to people, more confident as well. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like when you know you've done those things, it's just not overthinking it because realistically, whether you have blue trainers on or green trainers on, it's not really going to make too much difference. If your branding is that colour, then go with that. Um, if not, then you've got the whole world of the fitness industry to buy whatever outfit you want. Um, and I don't think there's your struggle for choice out there. So, um, yeah, realistic. That's I think that's the main thing that people need to actually get into their heads is you're not. Um, you're not really going to change the, the outlook of the photo shoot from having any of these various different color choices or anything like that. No, I agree. And I think, I think coming back to what you were talking about is you have to think of what is the whole point in this photo shoot. And it, uh, generally the reason people are doing it is to try and show off their physique and the hard work and the results they've got. And then in terms of some tips with that, where I think a lot of people would benefit, I think the biggest thing that I personally find with myself and people that I work with is accountability to someone because it's a bit of a, a not to say a messed up process, but psychologically when you're in a, a fat loss phase and you're trying to get lean to something like this, like a photo shoot and it's, it's something you haven't done before. It can actually become quite a stressful experience when it shouldn't be. So the best thing I could do is say to you is find someone outside of your own brain and your own bubble of close friends and family who like a coach or someone who knows what they're talking about you can be accountable to to give you advice and like yes you are on the right track you'll be fine for this or you need to maybe like sharpen things up a little bit or you need to change something because you're not making progress because i think a lot of people tend to stress an awful lot about oh they're not gonna be ready you're not gonna be ready and if you feel like that at all the best thing you can do is employ someone to help you achieve your goal and then all you have to focus on and put all your energy in, instead of worrying about doing anything is just executing whatever the plan is if you execute the plan, you'll get the results. And then we turn up to have a shoot with you, Ben, and you'll, they'll look insane. Um, well, and also as well, you wouldn't, <laughs> you, get a, you get a driving instructor to teach you how to drive. Yeah. You wouldn't go into a, an airport and go, you know what, I think I can fly this plane today. I'm feeling good. I can. I mean, well, we'd all like to have a go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's one of those things where when you've got someone to go to, you, and this is where 
I think a lot of people don't see it from this side. Obviously, I coach photographers how to improve their photography. And the bit is, is that when you've got someone to go to and you just go, I don't know this, when they've got an answer for you, it takes that stress away. Yeah, that, that, that's what you don't want. Yeah, don't we all want a life where there's, there's little stress? Me and you know we have enough stresses going on with everything else. If you could pay an extra X amount of money and take all that stress away, you try and do it. You try and do it as much as you can because that's how you kind of take the stress out and you allow yourself to grow. And obviously when you're dieting, the last thing you want is stress because then, you know, your cortisol levels go up and I know, I know bits and pieces about obviously the personal training side of things, but your energy levels get zapped from you stressing about things you don't need to stress about. So by having a coach, by having someone that you work with who's like a professional who can give you the best advice, they've had lots of experience in it, they can then calm your nerves and then put you in a place where actually when you turn up on the day, you realise all that concentrated on was just the best I could and that's what it mattered yeah 100% 100% I think talking about stress again like the effects that can have on the body in particular like the day before a photo shoot when you can be very nervous or the night before or the same with competing if you are very stressed your cortisol levels go up and then your body will release water and then you'll look like even worse so like I cannot emphasize how important it is that you stay relaxed and you, you don't get stressed when particularly in the final stages of these sort of uh, processes um, I think again, like talking about the final stages in terms of prepping a physique, like in my opinion, I'd always carb someone up to a degree for a photo shoot. But I think a common mistake a lot of people make, probably not women, but um, guys is probably they overdo it and eating too much trying to carb up. I'm always of the preference that you'd, you're better off under eating and being a bit flat because ultimately your goal is probably, to, unless you're a high level physique competitor, your, your goal is probably to look pretty lean. So you're better off underdoing it rather than overdoing it with eating too much food. Yeah, um, exactly. I don't know. I don't know if you've seen any mistakes you've seen people made in the past or that you've heard about. One, one thing I don't like is when people don't eat the morning of the shoot. Oh, that's the worst thing you do. Because, uh, and everyone thinks, Oh, I've just, I'll, I'll look that little bit leaner. What happens is, is you're picking up loads of weights and holding like a shoulder press and all of a sudden you're like this. And then you get up from the shoot and you're like, my head's all over the place. I don't know what I'm doing. And then you look at the photos and you go, why do I look like I was just about to have a stroke? You know, why do I look like I was, because you haven't eaten anything. You haven't put anything into your system. And this is where you put all the effort in early on and get the hard work done. So when you turn up on the day, you could fart and look good. And that's what we, you, you know, you want to be as simple as possible with it. The other thing I started saying to a lot of people is the night before a shoot, as long obviously you've planned your outfit, you know, mainly females, obviously guys probably just pick up a pair of shorts and trainers, try and get like a really early night sleep in. Because one of the things that like, um, and I know we've mentioned this the other day and you, you thanked me for pointing this out, I get horrific bags under my eyes and most people who are busy and stressed and obviously running around doing all these things, you just end up looking worse. Whereas if you actually try and go, you know what, I want to look great tomorrow. I'm going to have a good night's sleep, get some real rest in. Um, you know, whether it's going, you know, if, depending on what you've done with your spray tan, whether that's sitting in the bath, whether that's reading a book, whether that's whatever it is, just going and zoning out and then just having an early night. Not only will you feel better, you'll have more energy, which probably then will bring out the best in you. And I think it's just preloading those good things that you can do for yourself so that then when you turn up on the day, you're like, wow, actually, I feel great. You're saying um, that's a success. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, to touch back towards the diet point of view, just to give a brief overview of how I would run with a photo shoot, for, say for myself, for example, I have got um, an ebook on my website, talks about it in more detail, but generally I would probably run like lower carbohydrates. For, say if I was going to do a photo shoot, say for example, on Saturday, um, probably Monday through Wednesday, providing I was very lean at this point, which I'd hope I would be. Um, I would do a very low carb from... Monday to Wednesday, most likely, or like lowish for me, or just stick to probably what my current training day food is, which at that point, if I was very lean, would probably not be huge amounts of carbohydrates. And then probably the two days before it, I would then start to increase carbohydrates. Keep like that week, I'd keep water very, very high. And then the, probably like eight liters a day, six to eight liters a day. And then the day before the shoot, I'd keep water the high, keep water high until probably the afternoon and start to drop that down to probably half the amount I was having. Um, in terms of carbohydrate intake, I'd probably look to, for me personally, carb up on three to 400 grams the day before, which is still pretty conservative. It's enough to add muscle fullness. And the reason you want to add carbohydrates into the muscle cells 
when you've got a photo shoot is because the more uh, saturated the muscle cells are within reason of glycogen, the more the muscle will press against the skin because the muscle is fuller and therefore it will make you look leaner, uh, which is obviously the end goal we're looking for on the physique. The big thing in terms of carving up, I'd say, is to be aware of is to make sure that you're only using foods that you have actually eaten on your diet. So if you start trying to eat like crap, sugary junk food, uh, particularly before the photo shoot as well, that you're not used to, chances are you could put yourself in a position where you can have digestive problems. And that's the last thing you want um, when you're going into a situation with a photo shoot, you're going to be tensing your abs for 90 minutes where you've got a stomach issue. Well, one of the other things I see a lot of people go, they think, all oh, right, I'll do a carb up and do that. The amount of people that turn up to, with a bag of Haribo to a photo shoot, and I'm like, you haven't eaten this stuff for weeks. And then you can see as they're trying to use it, it takes so long for that to kind of be broken down and used that you've not actually got the benefit out of it in the slightest. Um, one of the other things as well is that, like, let's say um, – Typically, like if somebody's lost a lot of weight and this is their first time of doing it, I know for someone like yourself or someone who's competed a few times or maybe done a diet, then put a load of muscle on and so on, you can probably use those carbs quite well to then really like push that extra five to ten percent. Whereas I get people who have lost like I mean I've shot with some people that have lost fifteen twenty kilos. I mean even shot with someone who's lost ninety kilos so and really them, them carving up the day before realistically right. like it won't won't do much i don't think it will help them i think you need to stick to what you know um i do I, i've seen it from obviously the multiple sides of things whereas obviously like you know your client inside out the day before they turn up to that shoot you pretty much know what they're looking like how they're looking i get an instagram dm quite a lot of people are private i don't follow them because i can't waste my time doing all that type of stuff and going through everyone's profiles i've got no idea who half these people are until they turn up on the day and the last thing I want to recommend to someone who's lost 20 kilos is have a, like, a massive carb up. <laughs> yeah, just... Again, this comes back to finding someone to tell you what to do if you don't know what to do because everyone is different and what, like my physique is completely different to everyone else's and your body's completely different to everyone else's. Everyone is person dependent um, and the, the best thing you could do is take the guesswork out of it. If you put all this hard work in it, the last thing you want to do is balls it up at the last minute by doing something stupid that, your mate Joe down the gym said to do. Yeah, exactly. And like, like, I mean, I know you can obviously get like carb based drinks, which are really easy to just get in you. And obviously that helps out do those things. But I, that's why you invest in a coach. Like we've done it. Or I've done it because when you're doing those things and want to achieve those goals, you want to know the right answers. And if someone knows you and go, well, hang on, you blow. See, for me, I can't do very high fat. It really like screws me over. I have to go high carb, high protein, low fat. Um, and that worked really well for me. Whereas when I did it before on higher fat, I didn't look anywhere near as good. Um, and that's why I know that everyone is slightly different. So I would always advise people, make sure you have a coach. If you haven't got one, get one because the best coaches will know exactly how to bring out the best in you. And what's the point of investing all your time, money, effort, stress, and all that type of stuff into it if you're not going to want to bring your best on the day? Yeah, 100%. 100%. That makes complete sense. I think... To talk about diets as well, if like for people who do need to carb up, so again, this is person dependent. Um, the when you're in that process of carb up, carbing up, again, you don't need to so say, for example, you're taking in 40 grams of protein per meal, as an example, at the moment, and then the day before the shoot, you're carbing up, you don't need 40 grams of protein at each meal. So for me, I would half whatever your current protein intake is for that day, and then say in the morning of the shoot, what I would do is probably I'd have like a decent, probably whatever you have normally is like your pre-workout meal, but half the carbohydrate intake on that, uh, sorry, protein intake on that. Uh, make sure you add plenty of salt to all your food when you're carving up the day before and also the morning of the shoot. And as you already referred to, something I, I'm a big fan of having clients use is um, carb drinks during the shoot because as you said, often people are surprised how tiring it is uh, standing around posing and flexing for like 90 minutes so after about half an hour, you're going to really want that carb drink and it will keep you full and keep you vascular. Uh, if you have that right, depending on your physique, um, it will make a big, big difference. And, and that's the thing is knowing, knowing little things. Like, I mean, generally I've had, um, I've had someone take Viagra before a shoot to help them get vascular and get them pumped up. I've had all sorts of people try all sorts of different things. How did you know they take a Viagra? Because he told me afterwards. Oh yeah. <laughs> 
luck, luckily nothing else happened with the Viagra, um, fortunately, otherwise that could have been a very awkward shoot. Um, but yeah, there's, there's certain things, like every, there's so many people that try different things. Um, and I do just think it's, it, you're better to keep it simple. Like it's so easy to overcomplicate all these things. Um, and yeah, just by keeping it simple, you, you, you're going to guarantee yourself better results because if you're overthinking it, you've already taken your mind off of realistically, like I've said to all my clients on the, on the day of the shoot, you're going to tense absolutely everything and just relax your face. And if you've ever done that for an hour and a half for two hours, you know about it by the end of it. And if you're doing pull-ups, you're doing tricep press, whatever it is. And that's obviously as the shoot goes on, you'll get better and better looking because everything's pumping up, everything's like feeling better. And then it's, everything's getting in tighter because you wouldn't have eaten for a couple of hours by that point. So it's going into that shoot, knowing what I've put myself in the right place. And then when you're needing the energy, when you're really getting those final shots, that's when all of these things tickle the boxes. And then suddenly you go, well, by, by the end of it, I looked incredible. It's um, an interesting question. For me personally, I always like to do photo shoots in the morning after one meal. Do you have a preference of what time you want to do shoots with clients? Just because I find I'm much leaner during the morning. I try to just like smooth out over the day. Yeah, the, and also for me, um, the gyms are quieter in the mornings. So it kind of makes sense really. Like if you know when you wake up, you're going to be the leanest and you're the, the lightest and you put more fuel into yourself. And I've had people book shoots at like 10 o'clock at night and like they're just knackered by the end of it because they've been up all day, not eating a lot, probably not drunk a lot as well. And suddenly they're just absolutely like, it's knackers them. So I would say it's better to get up. And also, if you think about it this way, not that you go crazy after a shoot, but if you're going to go and treat yourself after a shoot, you've got longer to treat yourself if you shoot earlier in the day. So it's a double win on that. So you get your photo shoot done, you feel great, and then you go up. And yeah, go and enjoy it. (laughs) That's good, that's good. Um, So obviously we've covered nutrition to a degree and some other bits and pieces. I think some other mistakes that like people make in terms of actually prepping in terms of like this is getting a bit like personal care with people here but uh in terms of like hair removal tanning all those bits and pieces one of the best the worst thing you can do is if you do it is a long process shaving your body body hair i'm going to be honest with this and don't do it the day before try and do it like at least four or five days before and then maybe just go over it again um an easy way like a sneaky tip is to use a like a wet shave rate razor and like shower gel when you're in the shower or initially if you're a particularly hairy dude use a like pair of clippers and then do that um, yeah. is what i would say is probably my professional advice from experience yeah you add into that yeah i mean i normally say to like obviously people i mean one of the biggest things i get asked is like what kind of how dark should i go with a tan now obviously no your partner does the tanning i i um obviously the if you get your if you get shaved up beforehand, obviously I know some people like the rugged look and that's what they want to go with. If you're trying to show off Max Bruce. Really there. Yeah, exactly. I've shot with a few. I don't mind like, you know, everyone the thing from my side of things is everyone is unique in their ways. Like I could tell everyone to shave up, do this, do that, but if that's not you, I kind of think, well, I like, I shouldn't necessarily have to tell you how you should be. Like I we just want to advise you to what will bring out the best in you and what will look the best. Obviously, shaving up like a couple of days beforehand, they say like use clippers and then whether you've got a partner or someone that can help do your back and all that type of things um, before you start getting the broom handle out and doing all sorts yeah. of weird things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously getting getting shaved up. Um, I know females obviously don't tend to get a lot of body hair, but obviously keeping everything. I, I think also like when you prepare yourself like that, you know you've done everything. So you feel like, right, you know, my nails are done. I've clipped my nails up, I've brushed my teeth, I've done my hair. It's all those types of things that you go, well, I've done all those things. Now I feel good. So by having, you know, shave yourself up, you can see all the definition then. Um, getting a, a relatively dark tan. I always think if you see those people that come off of holiday and they're looking like brown, that's how the colour you want to look. I, I pretty much say to my clients, like, they're pretty much as dark as you can go. I think the darker the better, because I think a lot of people underdo it with the tans. And I think you must probably see it when people turn up. Um, I, I think you're always better off being slightly darker than too, too pasty as it were. Yeah, and also, like, obviously, with the flashes going off, they're bright white. So any white will just make everything look whiter. And I've shot with one person before who was like Tipex, and it was just impossible to see any definition until I really darken everything down just to be able to do it. So I generally think, um, and if you've never had a spray tan, it's definitely uh, an experience that's um, 
an interesting one, let's put it that way. Um, I've seen stage stuff when, well, I've not seen it, but I know stage stuff where you're bending over at all angles, getting everything covered. Um, but you kind of want it, if you feel like darker, you know, when you look at yourself, like, wow, I, not only do I look, <laughs> well, you, you know, like I, I see you come in and out of tans every light, every time I see you. And it's always like, you, you know, when someone's tanned up, they're just feeling that bit better. They look like they've been in the sun you for a while. As well. Yeah, exactly. It, 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 you really do like you know if you look pale and pasty it's just kind of one of those like well you know you've been starving yourself type look whereas if you actually like got a nice tan on you're looking feeling good it makes a world of difference no 100 percent um the other points of obviously we've covered uh hair and shaving and that sort of stuff the next one is a sneaky tip like, like i like to use in the shoots is coconut oil like personally for like putting onto your body is there's a very dramatic video of me doing this, this to one of our clients, Paul Andrews, who we did shoot with recently. Um, so like for me, like you want something on your skin to give a bit of a gloss, but not too much. So I find that like baby oil, as it were, is like a bit cringe. It's, um, it's a bit too greasy and shiny. I don't really like it on my skin as well. And also I, I found with baby oil, obviously, I, I, I actually made the mistake in one of my own shoots of using baby oil. And where I was in <laughs> to try and get it done like I actually had my own photo shoot done and I used baby oil and I didn't realize I had like a pool of it in the middle of my chest obviously where I've like, been like sweating and tensing coconut oil does seem to be a lot better um it's your skin a bit more I think yeah and also like you know it's actually quite good for you so like you, you know it's not a bad thing to have on you. um yeah, it just um yeah like and most people just obviously run off to the like uh, the, the thing is with baby oil as well is that it where it is quite slippy um it tends to go all over the floor doesn't look good on the gym if you're leaning against the mat like everything whereas the coconut oil gives you the shine but without so much kind of residue left over so you're not kind of going around polishing all the bits of equipment afterwards just to get rid of all the smears from the baby oil so i would definitely say um coconut oil is is a, a, and that was actually you that brought that to my attention. I didn't really, I'd always use baby oil. Um, I get, get quite a few people who don't want to go too shiny with it and they just like kind of more natural look. But I, I definitely think if you're trying to add, if you think that you've done that, you know, like almost like 100% of your diet, you've committed to everything, that the tan adds another 5 to 10%, the coconut oil adds another 5%. If you're then at 115%, it literally is a game changer. You add these small little things on, like, as you said, the accumulation of that, it makes a big, big difference. Plus your sick photography skills add, add, add another layer on it and a bit of light. So it's um, the old anabolic lighting and angles. So it's, it's it all adds up. A question for you, obviously, like you've, you started off doing shoots and training years ago and, you know, you've got to this point. From your first shoot to now, like what's been like the biggest change in what you've done with your photo shoots? Um, the biggest change in terms of preparation, I would say it, it just comes with experience because now I don't really really think about it, but I like, this is hands up to anyone out there opening up. First time I did, I was absolutely terrified. Uh, and that was probably four or five years ago. I have what to, was to scared you? what's that? What was the bit that actually scared you about it? Um, I don't know. I just felt nervous because I wasn't like at that point, like it's probably seemed weird for now for anyone who knows me, but I'm felt a bit awkward in front of the camera and I didn't really know how to position my body or anything like that. And if that felt a little bit awkward, um, however, like afterwards it was the greatest thing, like that led me then on to probably compete the following year. Cause it gave me confidence when I looked for the photos, I was like, Holy shit. Like I can get myself in shape when I actually sort my diet out and I'm consistent and do all the things that I know I can do, but I just sort of doubt myself and just wasn't consistent with, but it was more just the, the, on the day, I think, you feel a bit apprehensive because you're not used to being like in this sort of environment. Um, but like for anyone who's listening, like just be conf confidence is the biggest thing. And you must see it with certain people. Like, it's like there was that guy you, you shoot me the other day who was just like, wasn't even bothered. And you must get some people who are a little bit like shrinking violet. So you have to probably have to work a little bit more to get, get something out of them. But that's when working with a good photographer makes so much difference because they will tell you like, look down, look left, right, right, move your hips, X, Y, Z. Because it's difficult, particularly if you haven't got the experience of how to manipulate your body to make you look its best, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, the bit I've started trying to advise people, and I know obviously like when we've done shoots, you've obviously often tried to get along to them as well, um, is the fact that 
if you can bring someone along like your coach, um, and obviously I know now that if you've got bombarded with my messages of like, right, can you turn up to my shoot, you'd be all over the place. But if you can bring someone along with you, because obviously like my main concern is obviously getting the lighting and getting the images looking the best. The second concern is my model, because then if they're not looking their best, then none of it's going to work well. Um, the more you relax, and I try and make sure that people are super relaxed. Like I'm quite an easy open book. You know, you can talk to me about anything. Um, I try and bring that out in people because I think the more you actually laugh and one of the tips we found is that the more you laugh, the more your abs pop. So if you're laughing, you look good, your abs pop, we've, we've all won. Um, now I know obviously fitness is meant to be this kind of like very tough, you know, like kind of like head down, get in the game kind of thing. But you've worked that hard, like you might as well try and enjoy it and actually try and embrace the process of it. I know the thing that I think a lot of people were like nervous about is like you are literally in the limelight, like literally everyone else kind of moves away in the gym and there's just three big lights, or four big lights lighting you up every five seconds. Um, so I think a lot of people get very like, like what will everyone else think? But the, the best thing that I could ever say to people is that like there will be somebody in that gym that's looking over you that's jealous or envious or like, well, like you are and like you how inspiring would that be that if you that that person then went and did that photo shoot or competed or whatever it was because you've achieved your goal that's like cool. and like that's that's how you've inspired people like you yeah. you've lost weight you've done photo shoots you've been confident enough to sell yourself like not sell yourself but like show yourself yeah. to the world and then that's led people going i like what this guy does, I want a part of that. And then, you know, I've inspired people from my weight loss thing. I lost 38 kilos at one point, you know, like, and I went through that whole process and I wanted to do it. So then I understood that when someone came to me about all these things, I could then say, well, this is what I did or this is what my experience was. Um, so when you're in that position, you're better to smile and embrace it and actually just kind of go, you know what, I feel good. I feel like a celeb. I feel like someone who, who's doing these types of things because that brings out the best in you. And that's surely why we're all here. Yeah, you got to own it. And like, one of the things that I think, I was talking to someone on the podcast about this yesterday, or actually I think it might be Paul Andrews, um, was that if you need to behave like the person you want to be. So like, if, you, if you're using this photo shoot because you want to start like your own fitness empire or you want to work your way up into the fitness industry, behave like you're the person at the fucking top of it already. So like, act like a professional and... Don't be scared to be confident because confidence will come across massively on the camera. I think you probably agree. It's attractive, isn't it? Like, yeah, you, it is. like, not that I'm like flirting with all the clients I work with, but if someone looks confident, if they look like strong and positive, it's it, you want to go around those types of people. So, yeah, like, I mean, I often get people to do like the bit of the smiles where they kind of close and squint their eyes up a little bit because it makes them appear like they really like feel confident. If I'm all like bug eyed and look like wired just gonna be like what the hell was this dude on like you know like it doesn't look good so coming with that air of confidence and i know for like some people who like get a lot of anxiety and struggle with these types of things my beg my best advice with that would be is to picture someone who you admire someone that you look up to someone that you like even if that was yourself you know they've been coaching with you for a long time they're like i'd like to look and feel as good as charlie does well put yourself in his brain put, picture that you are that person if that helps you then switch how, how would he behave well, depends really. Depends what mood he's in and how tired he is. <laughs> <laughs> that knows me. <laughs> um, but like that's the thing. Like someone like that who's got the confidence, who knows the look, and you've only found that by kept pushing yourself. Like I'm more confident on camera now to talk to people because I realise that it's not actually necessarily about how my face is. I mean, I've had this spot on my face for like four days now that won't disappear, but it's not going to stop me from putting the content out because I know it's going to impact someone and that's more powerful than this. So go out there and be confident with it. And if you are struggling with it, put yourself in the mind of someone else who you think is attractive, who looks good, who's confident and be that person. And then when you realize afterwards, actually I was that person. I was just, it was just my head thinking other things that's quite powerful and that's what a lot of people come away from is saying I'm buzzing like I've not only have I got great images but I feel strong and I feel good, good and I feel bold and I, I want to do more and either help other people or you know do even more with myself so the confidence is massive I don't think that and like that's the big thing I think people can take from a photo shoot and like a lot of people listening to this might be like why should I do that like it will give you a goal where you will have to knuckle down and you'll know that the pressure will be on that you don't want to look like proverbially a dick on the day so like that pressure is what will make you succeed and achieve you to get the best physique like best look you ever have 
And then the, the confidence when you have that, like will take you to another level. And also how cool is it for you to be able to look back in a few years and be like, Oh look, look how I looked like at this stage of my life or X, Y, Z, or like in 40 years, you can show it to your kids and be like, Oh yeah, I used to be pretty jacked back in the day. Like when they don't believe yeah. you. So that's pretty cool. Like that's, I always say to people, like think of ten years in advance, where like you might have kids by that point, and you, you're doing that type of thing. And when, wow, well, like when I committed to myself, I really like brought the best out in me. Um, and like you all know now that like to bring out the best in you, you've invested in all sorts of areas of your life to then improve those things because you're like I can keep doing this, and I feel great from it. And every time I step out of my comfort zone, and le- like you, and realistically, like the other side of it is, if you're worried about photo shooters you're only going to learn or get great photos. If you didn't diet hard enough, if you didn't do it, then you've learned the next time, pull your finger out. Yeah. Or, or where you went wrong and like, yeah. and then and change it. And then you've got, you've got an answer. Then you haven't failed. You've just learned. Um, it might have been an expensive learn, but like, that's the whole point of it. You've not, you're never going to fail with these things as long as you do as much as you can uh, we all have dramas come up in our lives that we've got to juggle with and i have all sorts of people kind of throw random requests at me because something's happened but if you commit to these things and then look back in five ten years time and go wow like look how much i achieved that's positive like it's a it's a it's a how many pictures do you see of yourself where like i don't know years ago you've been on a night out and you look a mess and you're like i never want to see that photo again whereas you, <laughs> whereas you're looking great and looking like you know the best you've ever looked you want to stick that splat and stuff all over the walls. You're like, look at me, damn, I'm good. I can see my old wife's with me now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you tell her that then? Well, uh, this is this is an honest truth. I am. Um, I when I met my wife, it was nearly like five, just over five years ago. I put all my progress pictures on Tinder. Okay. And, and did you, did you my swipe, my swipe right, um, uh, certainly increased quite a lot. <laughs> Um, and that's what I mean. It's, it's attractive. Like it's not, I wasn't doing it because I was just like, I'm, I'm shredded. Look at me. I'm the, I'm the best, but that was part of me now. That was like part of my life. I've found something about myself that I liked. And this was part of me. Like if somebody doesn't like that, okay. Like there's millions of people in the world. Someone's not going to like me. Um, and yeah, so like, if you are single, like female or male, like you look in the best you've ever looked, it's quite attractive to a lot of people. 100%, 100%. Now to finish things up, Ben, what would you say is the biggest like thing to focus on for a photo shoot and the biggest thing to make sure you don't do for a photo shoot? The biggest thing to focus on would be the end feeling. That's good. Because instead of focusing on how many carbs you're having every day and all that stuff, like you've got that listed. Just see see food as fuel not as fun if you're going to do it for three months whatever it is do it because you're going to achieve that result think about how good you're going to feel you picture it in your head you've just done the photos you're absolutely like lean shredded and you're feeling great you then get to come home enjoy eating whatever food you're going to eat with your friends with your family have the social side of it think of that element don't think of I've got another 20 bicep curls to do every week. I've got another this because you'll just dwell yourself in a lot of stuff. Like if you keep your mind on the positive, mm. it, it makes everything else just this smaller little hurdle. I just need to go and do 40 minutes in the gym. I just need to eat this food today. And I actually found when I dieted, my business just excels because I'm so focused. I'm just like boom, 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 boom. As soon as I come away from it, like I get more lethargic and it's right. I, I, I have to like, and I've spoken to you about it, coaching because it's like i need to be in that zone where i'm just constantly achieving and constantly doing so by keeping your mind on that positive i think you can really pull yourself of any dark moments when you've been there like it's tough on your dieting and you're on low carbs and Um, it can get shit like for me personally the photo shoots aren't too bad but like competition prep the last like last four weeks few weeks was shit like there is no other trick but like it it it, pardon me it's crazy like it tests your minerals and i like that of how hard can you push yourself? Cause you know, in hindsight afterwards, you're like fair play. Like I proved to myself I could do that. And to anyone listening, like if you think whether you can or you can't do something like a photo shoot, just book it in and do it because it's the greatest thing in the world when you, you sort of doubt yourself and then you would go through and you achieve something and then you look back at the photos and you're like, I'm so proud of myself because I achieved what I, I set out to do. 
you know, like is that like um I'm gonna go, I, I don't know off the top of my head but it's like that quote, uh, quote out of Rocky if you think you can do it you're gonna do it if you think yeah. you're not gonna do it you're not gonna do it so if you think you can do it go and do it yeah, you know, exactly. you've got to stand in the middle of something why press a button it's not yeah. that hard it really isn't that difficult like um but yeah just focus on the positive out of it like and and the what one of the i suppose the worst things i've seen from it is people blaming other people for their like problems of why they haven't achieved things now i don't want to go touching on too many relationship advice and all this type of stuff but like you've got to surround yourself with good people like a good oh, coach like um and you know don't just because you're dieting don't go being a dick don't go being an ass like if you're if you realize you're being like that then you need to have a stiff word with yourself and then go actually why am i doing this i'm achieving my goals no one else is and keep that in your mind and like i said if you keep that positive in your mind you won't go thinking oh i'm on low calories i'm just going to be an ass to everyone don't need to be like that that just means you're a bad person go and actually be a good person and go and impact people by showing look you can achieve this yeah it's hard but don't we want to achieve things? Don't we want to overcome adversity and make these things possible? And they're all part of your success story, aren't they? Like, you know, if you hurt yourself halfway through the thing and you're like, oh, I couldn't train legs for four weeks, but then you still ended up looking great, that was part of your success story. Yeah, it's a cha- it's, everything is a challenge that can be overcome. It's just trying to think a way to solve the problem. <laughs> so, oh, sorry. Um, solution to problems. That's it. There's only, well, the Jamaicans say, well, we only have uh, situations that are like, you know, there's no problems, just situations. That's it. Yeah, 100%, 100%. So to wrap that up, Ben, um, for anyone to find out about you, any more information about shoots, what's the best way to get in touch? Oh, um, it froze up then. <laughs> um, so yeah, obviously I've um, on my, my Instagram, uh, Ben Mark Photo is my link to my website where all of the information about photo shoots is. Um, I know obviously me and you are going to be working together more to obviously get more people through the experience of obviously doing a photo shoot and get shredded. Um, but yeah, it's real simple. If you and obviously, if you want any advice or if you've got any questions, like you know, I like get a lot of people ask me kind of random questions about all sorts of bits and pieces. Feel free to get in touch. Um, as long as I'm not in the middle of a photo shoot, I'll always try and respond quite quickly. Um, but yeah, no, that's the easiest way to get in touch with me is um, either on my website benmarkphotography.com or uh, on my Instagram. And you've got a few international shoots coming up as well, haven't you, in the next few months? Yes, uh, I'm off to, well, I fly to Portugal tonight, but that's nothing to do with photographs. Um, and then I'm, I've got shoots in Dubai in November, or shooting Barcelona in December too. Um, and I've got then more trips over to Portugal. I hire out a villa for a couple of days and take a few bikini model uh, girls out there to go and experience what it's like shooting in the Algarve. Um, hopefully me and you will sort something like that obviously, so that we, uh, we get to go and shoot somewhere nice um, <laughs> yeah. and also the, the thing is with it is like obviously now a lot of these people probably listening in the UK um, it's getting cold it's getting dark being in the gym is not too bad because most people aren't in the gym over the winter unless they're really dedicated being able to for me to jump on a train to London is 40 quid for me to jump on a plane to Portugal and back is 42 pounds would you rather spend the two quid and go and shoot in Portugal for a couple of hours? Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit of a brainer, isn't it, really? Yeah, really. Like, you get to have an experience and get, and go, get, and get to go do something quite cool. So, um, hence why now I'm flying all over the world. Um, but, yeah, I'm excited to be out in Dubai and um, obviously Portugal and Crete next year and who knows where else. Yeah, so, no, thank you very much for today, mate. We um, covered some great points. I hope everyone takes away some real useful information from that. If anyone has any specific questions for myself in regards to... Uh, questions about prepping for photo shoots or anything like that, then drop me a message on Instagram or email me at charlie at charliejohnsonfitness.com. But thanks very much for today, Ben, and uh, keep up great work. Pleasure, mate. Thank you very much.